Aloha, and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is an accomplished recording artist, producer, and live performer who is also known as the Soul Trumpeter with six solo projects, 12 chart-topping Billboard singles, including his Billboard number one hit, Pass the Groove, and numerous collaborations with some of the industry's top R&B contemporary jazz artists to his credit. He is poised to be one of the most renowned artists of his generation. I am excited to be interviewing him today. Let's welcome Mr. Lynn Roundtree to the show. Aloha, how are you? Aloha, thank you guys for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, the first time that I heard about you, that I heard you was at the Cancun Jazz Festival. I was supposed yep. to be there with my friend. Uh -huh. I got sick, couldn't make it. And she's blasting, oh. she's blasting all <laughs> this live footage and you playing it, playing or playing in the foyer by the pool and all. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. I just yeah. was like, uh, she was just making me mad. But right. chatted with you and I follow you. I have your 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 last CD. Love Thank it. You. Amazing, amazing. Now, who or what inspired you to play music? Well, I, I was inspired uh, by my parents. Um, they had, uh, there was always music going in the house, a lot of uh, old soul, R&B, and gospel. Um, but in terms of playing, my father uh, played the, the cornet in high school, and uh, he did the Jedi mind trick on me. <laughs> uh, with uh, with cornet, uh, he put the cornet uh, that he played in high school. He had since stopped playing and switched to the guitar only for fun. And uh, I used to to wake up in the morning with him playing his guitar. But uh, I was never really interested in that guitar. I was interested in watching him play. But I was interested <laughs> in that cornet. The cornet sat on our mantelpiece in the in the family room. My dad said, "Look, you can touch anything in this family room. This is your house, our house. The only thing you can't touch is that trumpet." on the mantelpiece and of course that's the one thing that i always mm -hmm. wanted to touch so he set it up to set a trap for me to, to see if i'd actually moved it but he <laughs> put a pin on it and one day i just got so intrigued with it i said they won't mind if i just touch it i look at it so i grabbed it off the mantelpiece and the, 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 that evening my dad said you touched the trumpet huh i said i'm sorry dad he said well now you got to play it so uh <laughs> then i had to go to school i had to rent a Rent a, rent a horn and, and I had to start taking music classes, but I loved it. I loved it when I started playing it. Really? Now, do, you, sense, yeah. do you play any other instruments besides the trumpet? Not uh, live, uh, but I am a uh, producer. So I end up, uh, I've learned how to play chords on a, on, on a keyboard. Obviously I can play a lot of brass instruments, you know, the three valve black brass instruments are the same pretty much fingerings. Um, you know, so the, uh, you know, any tuba or mellophone or anything right. like that. Um, uh, but, uh, I primarily play live the trumpet and the flugelhorn. Okay. Now you attended and graduated from Duke Ellington school for perform for performing arts. And then from there you went to an HBCU historical black college. Yep. Um, yep. One of the best, and I won't say, I say one of the best because the one that I went to is the best, but you went to one of the best, Florida, Florida A&M, FAMU, where yeah. you were a part of the Marching 100, which is one of the best marching bands out there, out there. I, I will give you that. I will give you that because I was in the marching band at Hampton University. What was your experience like at Florida A&M and in the marching band? Well, in the best marching band in the, in the land, uh, <laughs> Florida and University, one of the best colleges in, <laughs> in the land, but the best marching band in the country. Uh, uh, I, I I had so many great experiences. I met so many great people. Uh, it was a challenge to, uh, to to come in and be able to continue to play at a high level as well as perform uh, in in all that heat down there in Florida mm -hmm. and and do the things that we had to do. Uh, but it wasn't just show showmanship. It wasn't just, you know, high stepping and what, you know, and you imagine you get down there in August to, to camp and, you know, it's, it's, you know, 800 degrees uh, and you're, you're having to learn how to, 
to march uh, mm-hmm. uh, on a on a on an old wet patch, which is called the patch. Uh, and uh, but also you had to play. Um, we were sticklers for being able to to perform and play and play musically. Um, so it, as much as we performed, as much as we practiced uh, our, our our formations and and our technique is as much as we had to know the music and we had to know how to play the music mm-hmm. and how to combine the two. Uh, so it, it, it was just, uh, an, um, I learned a lot there. I learned how to, and I always say, I learned how to, to prepare, practice and perform. Uh, emphasis on preparing and practicing because that's that's the only way you'll be able to perform. And I take a lot of that with me today. Uh, as you see me on the bandstand, uh, a lot of trumpet players uh, don't move as much as I do. I end up moving a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And it's because of the training and, and the performance that uh, that I, I, I learned uh, at Florida a I know what you're saying about that marching because I had to learn. I had to learn oh, going yeah. from regular band and then going there. And then it's a lot of discipline involved, a lot. It's almost like taking another college course, actually. Um, but it's a well, lot yeah. of discipline. Absolutely. A lot. It's double college courses because, I mean, you are learning the music. Yes. And you're expected I mean, before each performance. You were expected to play the book uh, yep. and know the music and know your your part, second trumpet or, or whatever part you had. You were you were expected to know the music, not just be out there blowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we used to do a thing called Shake the Tree. I don't know if you guys did it, but this is what the best bands did when we uh, uh <laughs> before before, uh, before the 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 day before a performance uh, to determine whether or not you got to put on that uniform because not everybody made uh made it that uh, that saturday to put on a uniform I mean, we needed a lot of people to to, to bring out out doc's ladder we needed a right. lot of people to set up the things on the field so a lot of those people were people that didn't necessarily live up to the task that week uh, and what we had to do is we used to call shake the tree uh where you would perform so there would be one or two trumpet players and one flute flute player one saxophone player one trombone tr- tuba and we'd all have to play our parts and do the entire uh, uh, halftime routine in front of the entire band while the band yep. sat on the bleachers. <laughs> you had to do that. And, uh, and, and you, in front of your peers, it, it was even more difficult than in front of the band, band directors. Yes. Uh, you just took your head. If you, you knew, you, no one had to tell you, look, you didn't make it. You, you don't measure up because you knew if you measured up or not, you just stuck your head between, you t- between your legs and, and walked off. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was it was a very very intimidating process. Again, this this has prepared me to do what I do now when I'm playing for thousands of people and they're all looking at me and expecting me to to be Lynn Roundtree. I always reflect back to those days because if I could do that, then you know, playing in front of all of these people who who actually love me, uh, <laughs> it, it it isn't a problem at all. Now, once you graduated from FAMU, how did you get into the into the music industry? What what was your start? Well, it was interesting because Florida A&M University, as you know, is a great has a great business program, mm-hmm. and so I went down there and graduated from the School of Business and Industry with a Bachelor of Science, and uh, I, I I went to pursue that when I, I I graduated. I put the trumpet down for about six months uh, and started a career in pharmaceutical sales, oh. legal pharmaceutical sales. Legal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, was getting married. He knew that uh, that I had played the trumpet, and so he said, "Hey, man, you know I need some music at my at my wedding, and you know I know you play the trumpet, and you know can you can you do some music for me?" And you know how people sometimes who aren't as musical and don't really know, they just know, "Hey, you play the trumpet, and mm-hmm. you can play something at my wedding." I was <laughs> like, oh, "Okay, you know I, I I got three months to get my chops together and and find a keyboard player, and you know we can go in there and play some real book songs for him." And that's exactly what we did. We, we we practiced a couple times a week, got our songs together, and, and played for the wedding. We made fifty dollars a piece, and I said, "Wow, you know, if I can make you know fifty bucks, you know, uh, playing this horn, uh, then maybe it's something I should pick back up and and pursue uh, seriously." And, and so that's what I did. I picked it up and I started uh, getting a lot of jam sessions uh, and just learning from a lot of the cats. I was in Milwaukee at the time, uh, and then I ended up moving over to Detroit. Um, and fortunately, I was at the tail end of a lot of uh, our legends were still around, uh, who are since gone now. But it was at the tail end of their uh, their uh, the twilight of their careers, 
and I was able to go in and sit in jam sessions and learn from a lot of the legendary Motown artists or Motown back backup musicians who actually played on on Motown. So very rich in uh, in, in in tutelage uh, opportunities uh, for me when I first got got here to Detroit and. Uh, you know, I, I, I then ventured out to try and start a band and um, people weren't hiring trumpet players as side men. Uh, you know, you usually look towards saxophone players or, or guitar mm -hmm. players as side men. People think more of trumpet players, more of, uh, you know, horn section work. Hey, can you come play Earth, Wind and Fire? A couple, get a horn, a couple horn players together and, and let's get some of these parts on uh, some Earth, Wind and Fire songs. So no, I, I wanted to be a soloist. So in order to be a soloist, I realized I had to start my own band. And so that's what I did. And that's where that Florida and m business uh, uh, degree came in in <laughs> handy, uh, being able to set up my band, set up my operations, set up a, a budget for the band and, and you know, secure uh, rental space and, and start to secure some gigs around town is what I did. And, and that's that's what started me, particularly in the music business. And, you know, I, I formed a group, group called Up Close. I got a, a person who could sing a lot better than I could play. And uh, we started covering Jill Scott and covering some of the popular music of, of today. I started to listen to what was popular and, and play what was popular. Uh, and I started to make a mark in, in Detroit uh, with, uh, with Up Close, uh, my, my, my band. Nice. Nice. Now you have six solo CDs. 2005, you came out with Groove Tree. 2008, yep. Something Good. 2010, Soul Tree, The Soul Jazz Experience. 2013, Serendipitous, 2015, mm -hmm. Soul Funky, and your most recent, your most recent album, which I absolutely love, Stronger mm -hmm. Still, with that mm -hmm. number one on the billboards, mm -hmm. Pass, Pass the Groove. What in the title of your title, how did you come up with that title, Stronger Still? Well, well, I, I didn't even, when you said how I got to the music business, I, I left out the part where I started recording CDs. And so, and this will tie right into the name Stronger Still. So in, in the clubs, after we'd finished playing our set, people would come up and ask, you know, hey, do you have a CD? We like the way you guys sound. We'd like to, you know, take your home, take take your music home with us. Uh, but do you have a CD? So I said, well, well, no, but with the business mind that I had, I said, maybe I should make a CD. That's a couple extra dollars after the gig, you know? So, I have to put, uh, we I have to go forth. on a quick break, Lynn, and we're going to come okay. right back, okay? And we'll finish that conversation. Okay. We'll be right back. We'll be right back right. with the soul trumpeter, Lynn, R R R Lynn Roundtree. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so, much. so much. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. We are interviewing today Mr. Lynn Roundtree. Lynn? Now, let's get back to what we were talking about. We were talking about your, your last CD, Stronger Still, and you were telling right. us how you came about with that right, title. Right. So, uh, after my gigs, uh, people would come up and ask if I, if I had a CD, and I thought, well, if I make a CD, then that's a little extra money for me at the end of the gigs, and so I set forth to make a, uh, a CD, and I had some songs in mind. I'd written some songs down, and Try to bang some things out, and I had a little QI 100 recorder that I could put some ideas, a sequencer that I could put some ideas down, and uh, I, I put some songs together. Took them uh, to some producers, Billy Meadows and Dana Davis, who uh, you know were some very, very well respected producers in the area who listened to some of my stuff and they heard where I was going with it. 
certainly didn't sound uh, high quality, but they heard the vibe <laughs> and the groove in it. And uh, they said, well, let's work with you. Can we rework some of these songs and produce some of these songs for you? I said, well, absolutely, because I don't know anything about it. Uh, and they did, and out came Groove Tree. The first single was uh, a song recorded uh, that featured Mr. Tim Bowman, who at the time was one of the hottest smooth jazz artists in the country. And uh, he lived here and was just gracious enough to um, lend his expertise on that song. And uh, because he was hot, other programmers started to open up that single that we pushed to radio. Uh, and they said, what's this other song by Tim Bowman? But he's a trumpet player. Who's this trumpet player? Is it Rick Braun? Is it, is it Bodie? It's just, you know, we, we like this stuff. And, uh, and, and that gave me the credibility. Tim gave me the credibility. He had them open the CD, but when they listened to it, um, what we had done was actually, uh, actually magical. I, and we hadn't even known what we had done with that first CD. Uh, everybody loved it, and uh, that really launched me into the national smooth jazz scene that I knew nothing about. Uh, mm. And so, um, you know, because I, I wasn't a smooth jazz artist, a quintessential right. smooth jazz artist. I have the, the, the path of the smooth. I, I was an R&B guy. Well, I'm still an R&B guy. I'm always mm -hmm. an R&B guy. Um, but, uh, you know, it jettisoned me into the smooth jazz environment. And so uh, afterwards, I started to make CDs and say, okay, well, what is smooth jazz? How does it sound? Let's make some smooth jazz records. And uh, we made some things here and there. Uh, uh, second album was, 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 was good. It's got some great songs on it. Uh, didn't catch the magic of the first album. Third album, uh, when the economy went bad and the record label uh, that we had started, um, uh, kind of we kind of dismantled it in, in you know, financial issues going on. I put out an independent record called Soul Tree, The Soul Jazz Experience. And it was an R&B album, and and it's an album that features about six vocal songs. Uh, it was a, a soul album. Was re really, you know, was in my heart. It was very, very well received. Uh, so much so that I was picked up by uh, Trippin' the Rhythm Records, I, I, uh, who who features said, "Hey, here's a guy out here doing his own thing and uh, making a mark." And you know, I had that cover of uh, "You Rock My World" on the CD, <laughs> and it was playing on on the charts at, at that time. And and they signed me to a deal. Um, and, uh, you know, we put out some songs that some great producers and all the while, um, never really, you know, we had some good stuff, but never a number one, obviously you want to see your stuff do well and everything's not always about getting a number one hit on the radio. It's nice to have. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I wanted it too much on, on some of the albums and, uh, at the point where I said, you know what, you know, all the ups and downs in this industry. A lot of people just give up in this industry uh, to, to have now six albums and be working on the sixth album uh, and still going through all. I mean, you know, we go through a lot personally as musicians right. uh, and sacrifice a lot with our families and have to sacrifice a lot with our our jobs, our careers. You know, do you want this promotion in your career? Well, no, because if I get this promotion, then I'm not going to do my music. And, you know, you, you know you, then you go through the self-doubt and there's a lot that ups and downs in this business. That can cause you to stop mm -hmm. uh, but all in all i just said you know what if i keep putting one foot in front of the other keep making good songs let me stop worrying about everything and just make what feels good to me and what i would like to hear what i'd like to pop in the in, in the in the deck in here i'm not going to worry about anymore what anybody uh, uh says or trying to get any smooth jazz hits and i've i've made it through a lot of the storms i got a lot of stuff i know that i have the the strength to to keep pushing forward and dang it i'm stronger still for it and that's where the name of the cd came up and when i put I like that it. name on that cd and the song past the groove came about by uh, uh a great producer michael broning uh who wrote and produced that song and, and passed that groove over to me because he started to hear my vibe we started working together on the songs he passed that groove over to me said hey man if you can get this it's yours i laid some track on it I laid my horn on it he said that's it that's exactly what i hear on that track he was like, I said, well, yeah, pass that groove on to me. Let's put it on the album, man. Stronger Still. Nice. And that became a one hit. Nice. So that's the story of, of Stronger Still. You well, had that's to hear a good the back story. story to hear why, why I named this CD Stronger Still. Well, I, I like that backstory, and, and thank you. Can we get a little sample for some of our viewers from you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, since we're talking about pass the groove. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nice, nice. Now for all of my viewers and listeners, if you do not have Lynn Roundtree's latest album, Stronger Still, go out and get it. You will love it. I guarantee you will love it. Now I want to talk about, because our time is, is running show, um, short, but I want you to talk about your nonprofit that you and your wife have yeah, going wife, on. Yeah, my wife, my wife and I have a, a, a nonprofit, uh, 501c3 called L.O. Lamb Cares, and it was born out of, my wife is a, a professional dancer. Uh, she dances primarily to liturgical dance, which is a, a, a spiritual type dance, and um, uh, but it's based and rooted in technique. And she saw a need, uh, a lot of a lot of people are popping up with dance groups and dance uh, centers, but uh, they're they're lacking the technique, but not because they lack the, 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 the want for wanting to have the technique, but because they don't have the resources. And, and our schools don't don't are, are not allocating as much mm -hmm. towards the arts and you know like 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 they were when she was growing up and she always tells a story that she was you know had could could have gone a lot of different ways growing up in the inner city uh, but dance was her outlet and access to dance was easier when she was growing up than it is now with all the technology and everything that we have now um, these programs aren't readily available you have to go out to the suburbs and get them and you have to they're exorbitant costs and so. She saw a need based on uh, on on her reality, um, and wanted to provide that that same opportunity for a lot of, of young kids that that she saw that that making these critical choices in, in life at at that point uh, and can go either way. And so we started this group. Uh, we started the, the the foundation to to get resources so uh, we can get a lot of these inner city youth. And, and in fact, we don't even have to be inner city, but anybody who wants to dance an opportunity to dance and the resources necessary to, uh, to, to be able to, to make it happen. And we do that through a conference as well, a, a yearly conference called L L Lamb um, Two Day Dance Intensive, where we actually, uh, we give out scholarships to some of these, uh, some of these youth, 50 to 100 scholarships, and we bring in some of the top dancers and dance leaders and instructors from across the country, from Alvin Ailey, uh, New York, from Florida, from Texas, uh, nice. and they all come into Detroit for two days. And anybody that that you know for a registration fee or if you've got a scholarship can take classes with these these world renowned people, and they can put it on their resume. Uh, and, but they can learn some technique uh, in these intensive classes, and and it's a it's an experience that stays with them. So it's something that we're really happy about, and to see the kids' faces and to see the after. Uh, effects of, of kids going out and starting their own dance companies after the, the dance programs that they've attended uh, through LLM Cares is just is just a blessing in and of itself and uh, and it's why we're here and so that's why we're doing what we're doing and uh, we're growing we're in our seventh year now and uh, it's it's again that's getting stronger still too so uh, everybody's getting a little stronger still what is the what's the website for that when I tell the people website the website Yep, www.lolamdance.org. Uh, awesome. So I like that. E, yep, e, e L O A O. What is it? E L O L A M dance.org. I'm sorry, I, I had a brain freeze there. Okay. Well, I like that because that's usually one of the questions that I'll ask is, like you said, since the music is music and the arts are being taken out of the schools, what can we do mm -hmm. to do that? And of course, you and your wife are, are doing that, which is just amazing. Just amazing. Yep. I like that. What do you have coming up? What what concerts do we have coming up? Well, tomorrow I'm back on a plane. I just finished playing the Dallas. Uh, I was down in Dallas with uh, my, my buddy Kirk Whalem and Mesa mm. and uh, him and Kayla Waters out there. Renee, we did a Mother's Day. Uh, concert for uh, Martini Blue, which was great. It was a great atmosphere. Blessing to all the beautiful mothers out there. Uh, this weekend, um, uh, tomorrow, I'm headed off to Birmingham, Alabama to play, ironically, uh, for my uh, alumni, national alumni convention uh, for the inauguration of our new national alumni president, Florida A&M University national alumni president. Nice. Uh, so it's going to be a concert for myself and, and Kimberly Holloway. It's a great 
neo soul vocalist and also my my freshman sister out of the band she lives in la um but the week after i'm in uh i'm in san diego um doing uh jazz at the creek and then i'm up uh, at harvell's in uh in long beach uh the week after i'm in dc for two two dates uh with myself james lloyd drew davidson and seti mo we're doing uh thing called the jazzy mob but we're doing two dates at blues alley uh and then i'm all over the all over the place uh, uh this summer got a nice pack schedule i'll be in the nassau bahamas with the nassau jazz festival ah, okay uh, i'll be in Asheville, north carolina with uh with uh, marcus anderson for his his inaugural uh jazz and coffee escape uh which is going to feature some 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 hot artists derby city jazz fest i'm doing stockton jazz fest and California, but you can go to my website and catch up with me. We're always adding more dates, uh, and, and we add them in real time. So hopefully, be able to see 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 anybody that's watching your show uh, there, as well as hopefully being able to get out to Hawaii. So I uh, <laughs> we're I gonna work on that to, one. <laughs> to, to to booking some uh, booking some Lynn Roundtree out there, but so, but it's great. You know, I, I I thrive off my fans. I thrive off of the people who enjoy my music. Uh, because you, we never know. We, we're writing this music. We never know, you know, how people are going to take it. If people are going to appreciate it, and you know, if, if my, when my music touches people and they let me know it does, it just gives me fuel and gives me life. So fans are my life, and I love to get out and play. Wow. Well, unfortunately, our time has come to an end for all of my viewers and listeners. If you want to learn more about Lynn Roundtree, go to www.lynnroundtreemusic.com. Everything is on there. His schedule, his bio, anything you want to know about Lynn is on there. Go there yeah. and just and, you know, if you're on the mainland and you're watching this, go to his concerts because he's amazing. He's amazing. Working on getting you here to Hawaii for sure. But I thank you, Lynn. And connect with social media too, uh, IG or uh, or Facebook, either one. Twitter. Okay. Yes, you heard that. Facebook, IG, <laughs> connect, connect with him. But thank you so much, Lynn, for being here with us. Tune in thank next. You. Thank you <laughs> Wonderful program. I appreciate it. Thank you. Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Tune in next week, everyone, when my guest will be Mr. Eric Darius. Until then, aloha. And God bless. God bless.